Hello class and welcome to the second day of section 2-3 where we are going to talk about related equations. By the end of today's lesson you will be able to convert between the three types of linear equations that we have learned about so far. To recap, our linear equation formats are either slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, featuring our slope and our y-intercept value, point-slope form, which is y minus y1 is equal to m parentheses x minus x1, and then our standard form, which is ax plus by is equal to c. Um, so there are many different scenarios when you would use each of these different equations, and it is often helpful to be able to convert between the three of them. Slope-intercept form is often the one that is easiest for people to graph. Um, Point-slope form usually is the easiest to start because you're usually given a slope or have a way to find your slope and then another point that you can use to plug into the equation. Uh, standard form is often used when you are solving um, word problems as an initial setup um, or things like that. So there are different variations and uses for each of these equations, and we're going to talk about how we can relate all of them so you can convert between the forms. So the first thing we're going to talk about is converting from point-slope form into standard form. Remember, there are the three rules of standard form. One, A, B, and C are integers. Our second rule is that A and B can't both equal zero. And then our third rule was that A is positive. So all of those are things we're going to have to remember as we're going from point slope form into standard form. The first thing you're going to always want to do when you are in point slope form and converting to another format is get rid of the parentheses using the distributive property. So I've got y plus 3 is equal to 2 fifths times x plus, and in this case we've got 2 over fifth or 2 over 5 times 5 over over 1, which is going to give me 10 over 5. Now, yes, you can convert that into a whole number, but I'm going to advise that you wait, because the next thing that we have to take care of is the fact that there's fractions in our equation right now, and standard form does not allow fractions. There is a very simple way to get rid of the fraction, and that is to multiply everything by the denominator. So as we multiply everything by the denominator, 5 times y is going to give me 5y plus 3 times 5, which is going to give me 15. When I do 2 fifths times 5, 2 times 5 is 10 divided by 5 is going to give me 2. So the numerator stays. Again, if I do 10 times 5, that's 50 divided by 5 is 10. So once again, the numerator stays. So that's why it's easiest when you distribute. Leave that number as a fraction because we're, the first thing we're going to have to do to get into standard form is multiply to get rid of that denominator, which is going to keep that value the same. Now, we need to make sure a and b don't both equal 0. So the key here is to check, do you see an x or a y in the equation? In this case, we see both, so we're great. Last thing we want to make sure is that a is positive. So right now, we look over here, the number in front of our x, the a value, that's positive. We don't want to move that. If it was a negative, then we would go ahead and move it, but because it's positive, we're going to keep it put. Now, to get back into our form, ax plus by is equal to c, that means I need to get the y value, which currently right now is 5y, we need to get this over by the x. So in order to do that, I'm going to take 5y away from both sides of the equation. Over here, that leaves me with just 15. Now on this side, I've got 2x and I've got 10, neither of which have y. So I've got 2x plus 10y, and then I just have my subtracting 5y on the end, because 5y can't combine with either of those two values. Again, we want to finish so that it looks like that where we have x and y on the same side with nothing else. So that means I now need to get rid of that 10. In order to do that, we're going to subtract 10 from both sides, which is going to give me a final answer of 5 is equal to 2x 
minus 5y. If you wanted to switch it around, so the x and y are on the left side of the equation, you could say 2x minus 5y is equal to 5. Either of those is an acceptable option for how to write it in standard form. Go ahead and try this one on your own. We don't have a fraction to worry about, so the first thing we do is just distribute. Then we have a negative x, so we're going to want to move that to the other side. Can't combine it with either of our two existing values. We're going to get rid of that 10 by adding 10 to both sides, and we end up with 6, or excuse me, 6x plus y is equal to negative 44. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to convert from point, or excuse me, slope intercept form into standard form. Again, we have to follow those three rules. So the first one is that there cannot be any fractions. We have to have integers. So once again, since I have a fraction, I'm going to start by multiplying all the values by the denominator. So 8 times y gives me 8y. Negative 3 eighths times 8 gives me negative 3x. And then 5 times 8 is 40. x or y exists, so we're good there. We're looking at our x, and right now that is a negative value, so I'm going to go ahead and add 3x to both sides of my equation. x and y can't be combined, so I've got 3x plus 8y is equal to 40, giving me my standard form of the equation. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Start by multiplying everything by 2. And then in this case, our x is positive, so I'm going to subtract the 2y, leaving me with nothing on the left side. And then I'm going to go ahead and add that 18, giving me a final answer of either 18 equals 1x minus 2y, or 1x minus 2y is equal to 18. If you didn't write the 1s in, that is also an okay thing to do. Next, we're going to take our point-slope form, and we're going to convert into slope-intercept form. Once again, remember that slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. There are no parentheses in slope-intercept form, so we're going to go ahead and use our distributive property once again. And I've got y plus 6 is equal to negative 3x plus 12. Be careful as you distribute. We've got two negatives, so it goes to a positive. The only thing that's left to do is to get y by itself. So I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides, giving me y is equal to negative 3x plus 6. And that puts us into our slope-intercept form. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Again, start with our distributive property. Gives us negative 2 thirds x minus 2. Then I'm going to go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides, giving us y is equal to negative 2 thirds x minus 5. Last thing we're going to talk about here is going into slope-intercept form from standard form. So we're going to start, and once again, remember that y is equal to mx plus b. So we need to get this y isolated by itself. My first thing I am going to get rid of then is my x's. So I'm going to subtract 7x from both sides. We can't put 8 and 7x together because those don't both have x's. So I have negative 4y. In order to keep it in slope-intercept form, we're going to put our x's first, so negative 7x, and then add on 8 because we had a positive 8. And now we need to get rid of that negative 4 from both sides. So we're going to divide everything by negative 4, giving me y is equal to negative 7 divided by negative 4. Negative and a negative is a positive 7 fourths. Since that is our slope, we're going to leave it as a fraction, and then I've got 8 divided by negative 4, which is going to give me a negative 2. So my slope-intercept form of the equation is y is equal to 7 fourths x minus 2. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Subtracting 3x from both sides and then dividing everything by 5 gives me a negative 3 fifths x minus 5. If you have questions about this or anything else from the lesson, please let me know when you get to class.